we um, started an initiative we called Customer Choice. And inside the company, we have a mantra that we need to be the ultimate consumer champion or customer champion. And sometimes those are just words that people say. Everyone says you should be outside in, not inside out, that kind of thing. But for the most part, if you really are a customer champion, you are challenging a part of your business model because a lot of business models are done to prey on the inefficiencies in the market. You saw that in the mobile industry, you see that sometimes in the financial service industry. And we basically, for since the beginning of PayPal, had been steering customers to their low cost instrument on file. So in other words, it may not have been what the customer wanted to use, but it was the highest margin project for us. And we had a very long conversation, many conversations at the board level uh, and inside PayPal to say, if we really are gonna be a customer champion, what we need to do and build a great and enduring company over the long term, what we really need to do is give customers choice and allow them to basically choose what instrument do they want to pay with and how do they want to pay every single time. Um, and that was, um, this is a somewhat courageous decision. The day we announced it, our stock dropped 9%. Um, within hours, there are headlines saying, you know, Shulman's strategy questioned as stock drops 9%. And I thought to myself, well, you know, give me at least a couple of days to prove that my strategy is working out, not hours, maybe even weeks and months and years. Here we are two years after announcing that and implementing it globally. We've put on 70 million incremental customers. Our transactions have almost doubled in that time frame, And we have less calls coming into our customer service center than we did two and a half years ago. And so not only, what, what does that mean? It means that customers are happier and also means that our costs are down at the same time and they're spending more, their engagement is up, churn is down. And that was ultimately such a transformational moment for us as a company. There's also a flip side to technology that can be you know, more Orwellian um, as well. And I think we as leaders in the tech industry and all of us need to think about in ethics of technology as we go forward because we live in a very rapidly changing world, an era where quantum computing and general artificial, artificial intelligence is coming to the rise, explosion of data that feeds those two things and makes them ever more smarter. But we can use that data and that information in ways that are incredibly helpful and maybe even open up access to the digital economy and afford everyone the opportunity to participate in that economy. A good example of that is the working capital. You know, we're at this point uh, on a run rate, I'll bet we're one of the top five providers of working capital small businesses in the US. And we do that without ever looking at a FICO score uh, of that small business customer because we have data and models that enable us to assess whether or not extending that working capital is the right thing for that customer. Can they responsibly um, take that um, loan um, and then use it to help their business? Here's what we found, two facts that I thought were fascinating of that. 25% of our loans of that five billion, so a billion dollars, went to the 3% of counties in the US where 10 or more banks have closed branches. So those are banking deserts, and banking deserts occur where the median income of that neighborhood is less than the national average. And so by definition, we were starting to, to lend to uh, minority-owned businesses, women-owned businesses, and they could not have gotten those loans were it not for PayPal. There wasn't a, another alternative. And then you combine it with the second fact is that where we extend working capital, on average, a small business's sales go up by 22% versus a control group of 2%. So think about what we do for neighborhoods and communities 
as a result of that use of data and information and technology. I mean, it's tremendously powerful in driving financial health. So for me, actually walking in the shoes of those who are underserved, going to cash checking locations and trying to cash check, going to money order centers to send a bill, standing in the lines, hearing the conversations, understanding how long it takes to go do that, how much money they actually do take from you for just doing currency conversions. I mean, that's it. Um, and it, without doing that, you don't understand that managing and moving money is not just about the cost element, but it's basically the time element. It's practically a part-time job to go and do it. And so uh, for me, it was a way to really understand, one, is this really a huge customer pain point? Two, can we solve it? Um, and three, you know, is it an issue big enough for us to go after? Once all of those were set in my mind, then I really wanted everyone in PayPal to go through that same exercise. And that's why when you do employee surveys at PayPal, some 94% of our employee base, it's an incredible number, understand our mission and vision and are proud to work at PayPal. And when you have that kind of employee base so engaged in what you're trying to go do, that's a winning formula for future success.